Well, we're about 130 videos in and I'm starting to ask myself the question, did I fail at minimalism? And if you've been decluttering for any length of time in your home and things aren't actually feeling any different, well, you may be asking yourself that same question. Well, hello friend, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. And of course, the short answer to did I fail at minimalism is no, but you know there's so much more to it than that. Now, if we're gonna ask the question, did I fail at minimalism, it would probably be a good idea to kind of decide what the initial expectations or goals were around minimalism to even determine whether or not I've been successful at attaining those goals over the last almost three years now. And whether you are pursuing minimalism or just looking to simplify life at home, I'm hopeful that this will kind of resonate with you. Now, in September of 2019, I was overwhelmed. I've talked about this before. I will link some videos down below where I've covered this. But basically, I felt like five gallons of crazy in a three-gallon bucket. It's been the best analogy that I can come up with to describe the anxiety and overwhelm that I felt just trying to manage our home and our family. And as I was looking for a laundry system that would help improve the constant flow and overflow of laundry in our home, I stumbled upon someone who totally mind ninja'd me. I did not see this coming. She described this simplified system, but it was totally a trick because there was so much more to this system than just the actual workings or process of putting a workload through the system. The key is that there was so little to manage that the system itself felt manageable. In fact, I think the underlying current that really spoke to me through that video was not just that you needed a system, but you could overcome the overwhelm that you were feeling just simply by having less to manage. And of course, I'm talking about my now dear friend, Dawn from The Minimal Mom. And after binge watching all of the videos that she had published at that time, I was starting to kind of come around a little. But I wasn't totally sold on minimalism and neither was my family. At that point, my kind of internal narrative was, I don't wanna go as far as minimalism, but I would like to have things a little bit better organized at home. And that mindset worked really well. I was able to get a lot of work done in our house. I simplified our laundry system. I simplified the toys. I moved through my kitchen and all of the other areas of our home that were really kind of sucking away all of my time. But I'd say around the six month mark, when I joined Dawn's private group, I started to have a little bit of a shift. I started this channel and realized quickly that I had a lot further to go. Just simply wanting to organize my stuff really wasn't far enough. I started asking the question, do I need this? which feels a lot more minimalistic, right? I certainly felt like I had reached a huge breakthrough and was finally starting to look at my home as more of a what do I need kind of mentality. And of course, I understand the concept of need, right? We all do. I don't, however, need a potato masher the same way that I need food and shelter, which meant this idea of do I need this kind of muddied the waters on things that help to make life easier. I mean, a potato masher certainly does make life a little easier. And of course, the sentimental items, the hobbies, the things that I enjoyed looking at, they didn't necessarily make my life easier, but I did need them in a way to kind of enjoy life. I would even go so far as to say that these things 
added value to my life. So I would, like many people, find reasons that I needed this particular item, or at least I couldn't get rid of it. And ultimately, if I couldn't make the decision, I would just slide it over to the side and worry about it another time. And because my goal was to make things easier and get more organized, I actually did achieve that kind of level of somewhat organization in my home. And even during a very difficult two years of kind of unexpected being home and then not being home and then again unexpectedly being home for 10 day increments, every now and then when I was fully not prepared for those things, we still managed to kind of survive moderately well over the past two years having a lot less in our home. But then something happened. Something that I think happens for many people on this journey. We reached a tipping point. My desire for minimalism and decluttering and simplifying our life simply became outweighed by the demands of our circumstances. Beginning at the really end of July, life started to become very difficult. And I wish I could find a stronger word than very difficult, but the fact of the matter was, it was really, really hard. And it kept coming wave after wave of increasingly difficult things to overcome. If I'm really honest, I began to feel very much like we were under some level of spiritual attack. Which brings me to the other aspect of this channel. Part of this journey of simplifying our life was so that I could devote more time to growing in my faith. My stuff was taking up all of my time. It was stressing me out. It was making me feel overwhelmed. And I couldn't actually find the logistical time to get into God's word and to go to him in meaningful prayer. And of course, I was then and still am teaching a women's Bible study with our church, and it began to feel more like a chore rather than a delight to get into God's word and deepen that relationship. When things started getting hard this past summer, they were and still are really tough things. And I know that many of you understand what I mean by these tough things things because I have heard from several people either in the comments or through messages, posts on our Instagram or DMs and things through Facebook, like all of the different ways that you guys find to communicate with me and share your stories. I know that there have been some incredibly difficult things happening for all of us in life. And I've come to realize that there is this ebb and flow. I mean, we all have times where we feel like we're walking in the valley and God's carrying us through the valley and it all feels very cliche and compartmentalized. And ultimately, they're just kind of those trivial struggles that feel hard in the moment, but we can easily look back and say, oh, I totally felt God carrying me through those times. The challenges that have brought on this kind of tipping point are really the things that become more reflected in our home. And ultimately, it makes us feel less close to God and it becomes more difficult for us to see Him carrying us through these things. When things get hard, our attention can be pulled into many different directions, which ultimately means that we actively put our attention someplace else other than decluttering and gatekeeping. Ultimately, this can make us feel like we're failing to pursue this lifestyle that we know brings us so much value. We start to realize that minimalism only really works when we do the work. And guess who's had a super hard time at doing the work lately? It's me, It obviously it's me. 
and maybe you, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling this way, that we want to pursue something, but every time we kind of venture down that road, it seems to be that stumbling block after stumbling block and barrier after barrier keeps being put in front of us. And it's frustrating and overwhelming. And I, again, have started to feel like some of those same old three years ago, five gallons and a three gallon bucket kind of overwhelm, anxiety, depression, have all started to kind of creep back in, just like the piles of mail, the unfolded laundry, and the dirty dishes. I recently shared some of my story at our church with a group of moms who are in the little years of parenting. And it really made me think about those kind of initial intentions and goals of simplifying our life so that I could ultimately deepen my faith. This idea of knowing whether or not I needed something, organizing things that I knew that I did need so I wasn't searching all over for those things, the most moment I needed them, the way my relationship with God felt when I came downstairs to a clean kitchen and opened my Bible, I have felt lately like I have lost much of those intentions and feelings and goals. We often think that leaving the mail on the counter to do something that is much more important isn't really that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world to have a few piles of paper here or there that are kind of waiting for you to deal with them. The problem is, it's never just a few piles of paper here and there. It grows and grows and grows. It attracts other things. It starts to feel overwhelming and we end up being completely overrun by our home. So the long answer to did I fail at minimalism is no, I haven't failed at minimalism. My desire to have less and pursue it are still there. I haven't completely filled my house back up to the point it was three years ago, but I certainly certainly have accumulated more than what I'm able to manage in a way that gives me those feelings of peace and contentment in our home. And while I 100% believe that only God can bring us true peace and contentment, I also 100% believe that one of the ways that he does that is through rightly aligning our desires for him and our desires for things. And so I have felt the desire to start again, and this time with a little more encouragement to ask the next question. Not do I need this item, but could I live without it? And just like I did those couple of years ago when I started this process, I don't have to go it alone. I have all of you to join me on this journey as I reclaim the right kind of abundance in our home and begin the process of further refining the things that we have. And I also have this great resource from my favorite mentor that sparked this journey for me all those years ago. So over the next several weeks, we are going to work through all of the areas in my home, all of the nitty gritty, all of the closets, all of the places that you probably don't want anyone to see. We are gonna work through all of those spaces with this book as our guide. I hope you'll join me for this journey and you can do that by hitting the subscribe button and pushing that little bell notification so that you get notified each time I post a new video. And if you're new around here and you'd like to see how I decluttered at least 80% of our stuff, I will leave a playlist right up here showing all of the decluttering that I have done in the last two years. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.